Let's look at how two users can easily work on a solution versioned by Subversion with the help of Visual SVN products. We will use three machines. First we will install Visual SVN Server onto a server machine and then we'll use two developer machines to see how Alice and Bob can work on the same solution. We can quickly install the server which manages our Subversion repositories. You can change the folders where the repositories are stored, connection port and authorization type. Now the server is installed and ready. The server includes a convenient user interface for administration. Let's create a new repository for our source code. Good practice is to keep all solutions in one repository so we will not be creating trunk, branches or tax folders on the top level. By default, Visual SVN Server allows access for all authenticated Windows users. Let's change our security settings to only allow the developers group to access our repositories. Next we'll add and change a solution using source control. To do this, we'll need the URL for our Subversion repository. We are now on Alice's computer. Alice can create a new solution in Visual Studio and add it to Subversion. We've already installed Visual SVN and Tortoise SVN on these developer machines. Let's create a new c -sharp solution. Unlike other source control systems that work in terms of projects, Visual SVN works in terms of solutions. The solutions approach is closer to Subversion's model and gives you more control over the source code. Now we need to add this solution to Subversion. The wizard knows our working directory. We want to use our existing repository. We give it the URL that we copied earlier and add our solution name and trunk. Next we log Alice in and then Visual SVN imports the solution. Alice is a member of the developer's user group and she uses her Windows account to log into Visual SVN server. You can see that all the files in this solution are marked by yellow lights in the Solution Explorer. This means that we have changes that need to be committed. It is good practice to always make a comment when checking files in. Because we're using a self-signed certificate in our Visual SVN server, we have to accept this once. And now the files are committed. Now our solution is stored in the Subversion repository. All the files in our solution have green lights. This means that the files stored in Subversion are the same as the files on Alice's machine. Now we are on Bob's machine. Bob wants to work on the same solution. First we have to get the solution onto this computer. We set the URL to the URL that we copied earlier and give our solution a name. Next we log in and open the solution. Let's make some changes to the title text and background colour. Now we save the solution and commit the changes using this shortcut icon. Now we're back on Alice's computer. She wants to update her solution to get Bob's updates. And that's it. Bob's changes are now present on Alice's computer. Alice might be curious to know what has changed. She can ask for a log of changes and see Bob's comment and a list of the changed files. As you can see, in just a few minutes with Visual SVN products we can set up a new Subversion repository and share the code between our developers.